Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 update video set. And in this one I'm going to start off by talking about science, yes. So after much waiting and prevaricating and looking for other things to get on with, I finally managed to get um, Astro Science 3 catalogues up and being made. So if we have a quick quick look up here, we can see there being that we've got the um, all the all, we've got all the data cards being fed in here, and um, eh, pay no attention to the obvious mistake over here. Um, yes, they're all being all being fed in here, and that means we are very very slowly now making um, Astro Science three catalogs. And so those are being fed off up to the train as you've seen before, and there's a bit of a mistake up here as well. So there's lots and lots of stuff for me to fix about this, but we are making or we I am now making the the uh, catalog three. So we've got catalog one, catalog two, catalog three. Um, the problem up here is they're being fed up the same belt as the as the tier twos, and therefore they're being stopped by this um, this piece of, this piece of belt control here. We need we need to split them off with um, with an additional splitter here that will take the, the threes off to the side, and then and, and then we can we can feed them in as appropriately up there. But that's fine. That's a simple simple th simple thing to fix. So this one has been it's been a long time coming. Um, not so much because the the uh, des recipes itself are particularly difficult, just because we've had some had some supply shortages. So, in order to make them, you need to get, uh, it's, it's like, a lot like the earlier science, the earlier astro sciences. I need to use gamma ray telescopes and radio telescopes in order to get these, um, in order to expose some frames and then, and then run those frames through the, uh, through the astrometric facilities to turn them into data cards. Great. All, all very, very standard. The sort of thing you, you, you've seen, you've seen plenty of times before because that's just how you do all of the astro science. Lovely. Uh, the problem was, the, the radio science was easy. You just, you just feed the, the, um, the frames in, they're exposed, and they're passed out here, and then you turn them into data cards. Simple. No problem there at all. The gamma ray ones were a bit harder because you need these gamma ray detectors, these these uh, purple mirror things, and those are made by taking in a, a, a multispectral mirror, which they're not too difficult to make. Let's, let, let, let's, look, let's look this up properly. The frame comes from a gamma ray detector. Here we go. It's a multispectral mirror. It takes a lot of weird things, but we've got those being made in bulk just over here on the other side of the on just on the other side of the tracks anyway. So so they're being brought over by train, and I needed them anyway for the previous tier. Those were fed into uh, these ones for the X-ray telescopes. So we needed them anyway. So that's fine. We had those. Then you need beryllium plate. That's fine. We've got loads of beryllium around here. That's not a problem at all. We've got lo loads of it. It's used for all all the way through the astro sciences. Uh, chemical gel wasn't a problem. We had quite a lot of that. We just brought it in by pipe. The problem was the cryonite slush, um, and that was a problem because we we didn't have enough cryonite essentially. So we've got it. So now we've got a system just over here. We've got a system just over here where it pulls in cryonite arrives by delivery cannon. It gets passed over here. These turn it. These dissolve the cryonite and sulfuric acid. That gives us the cryonite slush, and we now have. 54,000 in the station over here, which isn't enough to summon a train, because you need to get up to 60,000 in order to fill a, flu a space fluid train. So, we need another 6,000 there, which means we need another 600 cryonite, which isn't a huge amount, but we seem to have run out. So, that's a, that's a problem. But down down here, it's being brought over by the train, and we do have a little bit of buffer here. We've got 32,000 in the, in the station here, so that can be passed out over here, and allow us to make the gamma ray detectors. So, fine. We've got that, uh, got the cryonite flowing a little bit, that was able to start working. Great, and so those, so then we were able to make the purple frames and pass them down here to make them into the into the data cards. Great, that wasn't actually too bad. The next part was this one, which is negative pressure data. Yes, negative pressure data. And the tricky part of this was it required these aeroframe scaffolds. And you'll remember those from yesterday's video because I was talking about pumping those into my uh, into my new into my new train that brings everything up from the ground that we need up here. And we want to make these on the ground because then we can use our productivity modules to make everything a bit more efficient. So on Norvis, I set up a couple of a, a few weeks ago, probably back 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 in the last series actually, I set up this system here, which is bringing in um, iron iron ingots by they're they're arriving by train. So when this gets down to below a certain amount, and apparently that that is a, a sufficiently not sufficiently low amount, it will trigger a train will come out, bring some more iron ingots, and we can get carry, carry that. The beryllium is coming in by delivery cannon, being dropped off here, uh, like that boop uh, the cryonite in theory is coming in here and being dropped off and being passed down to, to be made and, and then we've got the uh, immersite plates immersion plates sorry also coming in by delivery cannon being passed over here what's going on here why is that so full and why are you oh I see that isn't connected that should be connected there's loads of red cables running around over here but none none actually linking up to that um box there so let's do that because that's supposed to, that's supposed to be it or is it maybe it isn't actually what sort of numbers have i got on here 
minus ones. Okay, so actually maybe that's not necessary because we want to we want to always have a little bit in here, and then it's available to pass through into into this to keep this satisfied. So yeah, all right, that's that's actually is, is it was okay without that connect. Anyway, so again, we need more cryonite for that one to come down here. And as you can see, we've got um, we're using productivity modules for everything here. Uh, tier threes, admittedly, maybe, maybe these should be upgraded. I don't know, That's, but tier three is pretty good, and we can make those down on Norvis relatively easily um, and relatively cheaply. So this takes in the aeroframe poles, the cryonite rods, and the immersion plates, and makes the aeroframe scaffolds. Oh, is that some cryonite? No, that's some more brilliant. So those then get passed up here in, in, into this station. When you get a train full in here, a train comes along, grabs them, and takes them off somewhere to be used. Now, there's a couple of places where they're being used. One is just over here where we're making low-density structures. Um, however, I've turned this station off for the time being um, because... Basically because I wanted to prioritise the other other place they're going to. We are also making low density structures up here, yes, with the old style recipe, which just gets through massive, massive quantities of plastic and copper and steel, I think that is. Yes, yeah, steel. Uh, so it's not... This one is not necessarily better, but it doesn't... It's, in fact, it's, it's almost certainly worse and more expensive, but it doesn't use as much exotic ingredients. So there they are. So the train will eventually bring the uh, bring the load and bring the aeroframe scaffolds over to this station here, where they can then be passed out down the um, down the belt here and off to be uh, to loaded into these space trains to be taken up to Norbit, Norbit with uh, yes the orbit one. So they come up here and they're unloaded by the train. They they float flow down a, a quite a long belt actually, which is why it looks so it looks like we're so sparse of them. But there are there are some on here, honest. Uh, they get passed all the way down here. And then they, we, and then we can actually finally make the negative pressure data. So that's been a bit, that's been a bit of a mission. It also uses the astrometric data. That's the one that's made out of various other um, data types up here, uh, here. And there are various recipes. There are three different recipes for this one. We've got the, um, in fact, let's look in, let's look in FNEI because it'll be an easy, easy way of showing it. Astrometric data. That's this one. So you can either make it the easy way, where you feed in each of the three very, very mundane um, data types that come from normal telescopes, uh, infrared, visible, and UV. They go in, and you get out the uh, the data cards instead. Yeah, that's that. You put in three, you get out three. Not too bad. Alternatively, you can do the next recipe up where you bring in those plus microwave and x-ray observation data and those are the ones that you get from making the tier 2 astro um, catalogs and that way when you feed and then when you feed in 5 you put in 5 blank data cards as well and you get 10 out so it's actually quite a lot cheaper in resources to do it this way uh, you get a lot more astrometric data out for the for the input stuff so it's it's it's, it's better you, you you want to upgrade to that as soon as you can then we move on to the, to the third recipe for it and this time as you've probably guessed you put in the radio wave and the gamma ray uh, uh, observation data as well and at this point you're putting in seven and you're getting 20 out so it's even better it's almost th almost one to three so really really efficient but you need to put in a supply of all these cards and I've not done that yet I am going to need to bring up a long 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 belt probably up this gap this convenient gap here um, except that convenient gap there was really intended for bringing more uh, observation plates down I don't know we'll have to have, have, have to see but somehow I need to bring the, all those, those up here, and then I can feed them in here, and we'll make, start making them with a more efficient recipe. But anyway, the point is that we're, we're now able to make the negative pressure data. We've got every, everything we need here. All these machines are running merrily, and we're producing the data cards, as you can see there. Now, as like most of the uh, space sciences, there's a chance of it failing. So down here, as you can see, there's a 90% a chance of you actually getting the negative pressure data. Uh, there's a 9% chance of the, of the data card just getting junked and having to get, having to be sent off for reformatting. And then there's a 1% chance of it just evaporating into the ether. Um, so goodness knows what happens to the resources at that point, but never mind. You then um, have to feed those negative pressure data down into these gravimetric facilities. Um, and then you can do more science on them, uh, along with some gravitational lensing data, which is one of the more complex science packs from the Astro 2. Uh, and that allows you to make the dark matter data and sometimes break cards. Uh, I didn't notice that you also get—I didn't notice that you get junk and broken out of this. And so along here, we've got—I've we, we, made a bit of a mistake. And every so often, we have a broken data card flowing up this belt here, which goes all the way up to here, and is why there's a little line of them along here, which I will need to tidy up. But I hadn't noticed it. I hadn't noticed it when it was during the stream. I only just noticed it for, uh, this evening, and so I shall be uh, sorting that out another time. This area, especially this part needs to be, well, this, this bit needs to be made much, much bigger because as you can see, the, the, the complete lack of, is it dark matter, yes, dark matter data is what's holding up the, um, the, these machines up here. So I need, to, I need to get a lot more dark matter data being made. Um, and so, 
That is also going to mean I'm going to need a lot more of these in order to produce the negative pressure data that's required for the dark matter. However, that is going to be quite easy. It's just going to be a case of doing this a, a, a few times. And then the bots will come over. They'll build all of this stuff up for me. And we'll be able to make a lot more of that. And that's one, two, three, four times as many. Uh, and it's getting half of the, th the throughput at the moment. So I probably need to, I don't know, uh, double this, I guess, to keep, to keep the numbers about right. So we'll put some more in there and there. Finish the belt off like that. And there we go. That should um, significantly increase the amount of data cards coming through from here. I also need to fix the uh, this this problem with the uh, with the um, uh, broken data cards going the wrong way. But that's uh, that, that that I think I will save for the next stream. So that's going quite nicely. We now and are now actually able to make the uh, the tier three uh, catalogs. <laughs> I did make a bit of a mistake here when I set this up. So um, I originally had um, this cold thermofluid pipe running up the middle here, and then warm ones on the outside to take the the warm stuff away. Um, and that's that was working fine for the for the tier twos. Great, no no problems there. Then I plugged these ones in and went, oh heck, they require the uh, they require super cooled thermofluid, not 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 just cold. So I was thinking, how am I going to fix this? So there, were, I had a couple of ideas. One was to run the um, the cold pipe along at this level, so one above where the uh, the warm is now, and then put lots of underground pipes along here and just have the pipes run pass straight through and into the machines. That would have worked. I could have done, and then have the and then I could have the super chilled come along here, and the two wouldn't have touched. That would have been okay. But I decided actually it'd be ni neater to have the um, the warm pipe in the middle because then they can still share it turn all the machines around and then swap the pipe connections over at this end so we've now got the warm coming up the middle we've got the cold on the top and the super cold on the super chill on the bottom and so that is keeping all of them separate and organized and tidy and it means the system just works i have to admit i'm not quite sure why there's such a big gap between all of these um between these machines actually that said it is only a two square gap and it kind of you either need to make a one square gap, or you need to make sure you rotate your machines very carefully so you don't get any um, accidental connections between warm and, and cold, or warm and super chilled, uh, between the machines, because that, that just leads to annoyances and headaches down the line. So I think this, this, this design is probably absolutely fine. Um, yeah, and it works quite nicely with these five long space pipes as well. So, as I was saying, for all to get all of this running, I needed lots and lots of cryonite, uh, both for here and down on Norbit. And that comes from Snowdrop, and Tristan has been out there busily building up a, um, a system over here. So last time, last time we looked at this, I think he had the nuclear power plant in place, and maybe some pulverizers, I don't remember exactly, but this is now up and actually operational. So he's got, well, in theory operational anyway, this, this seems to have backed up horribly with something well uh, oh looks like looks like it's backed up with um uh core fragments which is a little bit unfortunate uh, so he's going to have to fix that sort of pronto in the next in the next stream uh we'll have a look at that in a moment but through here we've got cryonite core chunks that are being dug up from core mines as is traditional so there's one there one there and there, 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 there he's got so that's what six five of them yes five Five, five of them, all feed, all feeding the core chunks into the back of here, where in the, of these, where they're getting pulverized. And you'll notice that the the, the big thing that's going on here is that we've got now got uh, lots and lots. Of, we've got productivity modules in here and speed modules in the beacon. So these things are being are running much more effectively. Each time they run, they'll produce an extra thirty one percent. So you get an extra third free from those. Then they get passed over here into some more advanced machines where we're using advanced chemical plants and advanced furnaces and that gives us a boost of 31% uh, from that one and a 40% boost from that one. Now they're not all in a, in a row because making the cryonite rods requires some cryonite powder and some cryonite crystals where, and the crystals are made in here from the powder so some of it... Uh, half the stuff that goes into it gets to have an extra productivity step and the other half doesn't but even so it's going to be it's going to be significantly better than it, than it would be without these productivity modules. Now, I noticed that, Tris interestingly, Tristan's gone in here and he's used a lot of efficiency modules to bring the power consumption of these down. I guess that's because he is trying to produce everything from a nuclear power plant over here. Therefore, the fuel is not free. And so it makes sense to, uh, to be trying to be a little bit more efficient about it. Um, I guess maybe we'll put in a space elevator here in the, in the near future, and then, then you can have essentially unlimited power. Um, and then you'll be able to replace all of these with speed modules. Everything will run a lot quicker. 
Um, I don't know if that'll actually really be much of a help, but it does mean in theory he could then upgrade these to significantly higher tier productivity modules without using a significant amount more resource. So he could potentially upgrade all the productivity 3s, because if he uses half as many machines then he can upgrade them all to productivity 4s, and all he needs is an enormous quantity of Vitamalange extract and some machine learning data, which is probably worth it, but it would use a lot more power. Um, anyway, so this is now, in theory, producing lots and lots of cryonite, which is what's got the systems working that I was pointing, uh, demo showing you before. And over here, he's just copied and pasted all of the uh, delivery cannons and their uh, receivers that were over on Dracket to here as well. So in theory, he's got he now now got he's now feeding all of the all of the places that we're feeding before, and but but with a higher supply. Um, over here, we see that this has all failed because he has too much iron by the looks of it. Um, why is... Oh, right. This belt needs to go off to a delivery cannon over here. To this delivery cannon, in fact, in order to be shipped off to Norvis. So once he's done that, then things will start to work again. Uh, that's glass. This, this one is iron. So it's this belt here. So if we do this... Then the iron will flow down here. It'll go into the, it'll go into the delivery cannon. It'll unclog this system over here. We'll start using the uh, the core fragments again, and then everything should actually start, should should start working, and we'll get cryonite through. Let's 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 watch that start working. So as you can see, we're putting in the um, putting in the belts by uh, by bot because that's what that's what bots do, and that means we are now able to take the iron out of this uh, out of this furnace, and that means we're now able to feed more iron ore into it. And that means we're then able to do all the same sort of things. Everything over here is now starting to flow. So even these, these are starting to flow again, which means we'll start to get more delivery cannon capsules coming out of here eventually. But the most important thing is that this, this now starts to flow. And that means that down here, we can get we can start pulling the all of the all of these um, core fragments out from this part of the of the system. And that means that we can start then processing the cryonite core fragments. The cryonite will then start to flow through. And just like that, everything starts to work again. Except this bit down here that isn't isn't working. So oh, I think Tristan said he he realised there was a shortage of steam or something down here. So that yeah, there's that needs a needs a something like that to fix it. So over here, yes, the cryonite is now getting processed again. All these machines kick back into into action, and the cryonite rods start to flow once again. We still don't have an enormous number of these coming through, to, to, to be honest. Um, I suspect we're going to need some further expansion here. Whether that means going off and getting more of these. Um, uh, more of these uh, core seams, or whether he's just going to go off and tap a, a 44 million cryonite seam like that. Uh, that's going to be up to Tristan. We shall see what he, we shall see what he decides he wants to do. Uh, but there is there is a lot of cryonite on this planet, so uh, pulling it out of, out of traditional mines is probably not going to be a problem. <laughs> but as you can see, this is now starting to flow through here, and there we can start shipping it off to all of the all of the other places that are request, requesting it. Back in Norbit, I also realised that we weren't using the best possible um, productivity modules in our science labs, and you always, always, always want to be using the absolute best um, mod uh, productivity modules you can in your science labs, because it is completely, absolutely 100% worth the cost. Because everything else, the entire, every single other part of the factory, is essentially feeding resources through in order to make your science packs. So if you can come in here and add 10% of effectiveness on, you're, you're immediately, instantly multiplying everything throughout the entire factory by a ten, with a 10% productivity boost. And it makes an enormous, enormous difference. I say everything, and if you're building infrastructure, it doesn't. But, ev but most, of the, most of your resources go into science packs. Now, these, as you can see, as you'll notice here, these labs are not currently running, even though we have a research that's trying, trying desperately to happen. And that is because we've run out of one of the more, um, the, the, the first of the sort of spacey sciences. So over here, we have we have this machine here, as you can see, building up the uh, the red, what are these ones? These, the, are these production science packs? Yes, production science packs. And it's not running very quickly. Um, and the reason, we had a bit of a look into this at the end of the last stream, and it turns out it's very, very short of plasma stream. So the fix for that is, is straight, is trivial. We just need to extend this up, make, 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 add about three times as many of these machines, and maybe, maybe whack in some speed modules so they run a bit faster, because who care, who cares about the amount of electricity we're using? We have, ele we have 22 gig, well no, we have 11 gigawatts available, so it's not going to be a problem. We, we just, we... Yeah, we can, we can just massively increase this, uh, fill it up with speed modules, get loads of plasma running through. But I suspect that's still probably not going to be quite fast enough. So I think we're going to want to put in a second one of each of these machines just to make sure we have plenty, plenty of these science packs coming through. That's going to be a very, very easy expansion to do, though, because as usual, I built, I built these all in my standard 
dis standard way of building things where you just have, where if you want more, you can just put more machines onto the end of the row, and it's all designed around that that theory uh, working quite nicely. So we'll we'll do that in the next stream. In the next stream, we'll get a bit more of that coming running through because then that can run all the way up to the science train here. Uh, there we go. There's 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 three of them coming in like that, which is a little bit pathetic. But they they can go in here. They'll then be fed into the train, and as you can see, the train needs another. 410 before it'll actually depart automatically. Uh, I mean, I can I can send it off manually like that, and it will merrily trundle off to take the to take all those science packs over to the to the science area. But having to trigger that manually repeatedly is it's a bit of a faff, and it just means that we clearly don't quite have enough um, in, enough pro production science packs being made. I do like the sound the space trains make. It's sort of futuristic and electrical and, and stuff. So this will then arrive over here. It'll unload as appropriate. It'll put pa passing all these all the science packs through until there's whatever the number is that we decided was appropriate. A thousand of a thousand of each one in, in, in the uh, in, in the warehouses. And we should Yeah there we go. There's the production science packs coming out of here and being and they're being passed over and eventually they will reach the labs and we'll start being able to do science again. And then very quickly finish off life support equipment too because apparently that's what we're working on at the moment. You can see how fast these flow. Oh, they're flowing actually. They're flowing in that speed because uh, with with when you when you load a machine with loaders, it fills it up as far as you would if you were loading it directly by hand, rather than just filling it up to the amount an inserter would. So we've got 200 of each science back in there, which is a little bit greedy, um, but it uh, yeah, <laughs> but it means there's a little bit a little bit more of a buffer, I suppose. And you can see that all of these are sort of gradually ticking in into the into the machine as as the as they get used up. The other big exciting thing that has happened is that uh, Mark has rebuilt the um, the core processing facilities on Norvis. So previously we had all, you know, as, as you may remember, we have all these core mines are digging up the core for a core chunks. They're being fed down belts like this into a station, being picked up by a train and taken away. Previously we had a drop off station around here somewhere. Uh, probably, be, oh, it would, would have been here, and it has now been replaced with a pickup station instead because there is a there is a core mine here. And then we had lots and lots of pulverizers up here that were crushing all those core fragments down into all of their useful um, uh, components. Mark has improved that somewhat. We now have a uh, core mine drop, uh, a core chunk drop off station here, where all the all the core chunks are being dropped off by train, as you as as, as you've seen uh, in exactly the same way. But the big difference is that we've now got them properly moduled and beaconed. So we've got tier three uh, productivity modules through all of these machines, and that's getting us that's getting us a boost of 31% on the productivity. I'm not sure how you divide that by four and why it's not a, why it's not a, a, a rounder number, but who knows. But anyway, it's getting us 31% extra, but we're also boosting that with these wide area beacons. So these machines are running at a crafting speed of uh, plus 220%, so three times their normal, three and a bit times their normal speed, and they're also and and also giving us that plus 30% on the uh, of, of extra stuff coming out. So yes, a train pulls in like this and then merrily un un unloads onto the, the green belts. It's buffered briefly in the in the warehouse here. And in theory, because there's four green belts in and four blue belts out, that does mean that we can empty the train into here faster than the warehouse will empty back out onto the onto the belts. And that means in th that if we have enough of these trains coming through, then we'll be able to keep a steady stream of it going through even if the, e even when the trains clear off. But I don't think we're getting enough out of the mines at the moment. Maybe later when we've done more um, mining productivity research. So that one then goes away, and this one comes in. In theory, yes, this might just make. No, it hasn't quite made it, <laughs> but it can nearly make it to keep to keep a steady stream of core core chunks coming out here. So the uh, the core chunks, yes, as, as as you're very familiar with by now, they go into the into the pulverizers. They come back out again as these steady streams of resources. We're sorting them with these uh, sortimatrons like that, and then passing them down through here, and then they're all going into their own separate uh, separate stations over here. So we've got the uranium, coal, stone, and so on. And trains can come over here, in theory, at a higher priority. They will load up, and then they will take the resources away to wherever they're needed. And hopefully, this will all work perfectly. It'll all be ni nicely balanced, and we'll have exactly the right amount of absolutely everything. Although we are still voiding um, mineral water, because mineral water is an absolute nonsense in this game. You get so much of it, you just don't know what to do with it. But anyway, uh, there's an emergency void for oil as well. I hope we won't be using that. And a void for oh, and you get water out as well, so we're avoiding the, we're avoiding the water as well and blowing it off into the atmosphere in some sort of fine mist, I guess. Um, 
<laughs> yes. So yeah, we we uh, Mark has rebuilt the rebuilt the um the, the ore processing area, and as you can see, it's now much much smaller than it was before. Before previously, it stretched pretty much all the way across. It was all of this area here, including the sorting part of it, and now it's just this tiny little bit up here. But we do need a huge array of straight stations because we now can't dump it straight out into the um, into the processing facilities, into into the smelting facilities that used to be here and now aren't anyway. So it doesn't it's just kind of irrelevant. Um, but we are yeah. In, in overall, this is this is much much better. I think this is another place where it's probably going to be worth upgrading to maybe to tier 4 uh, productivity modules. But I think I would like to get spaceships first because that will mean we'll be able to bring the... Uh, so in order to make a tier 4 productivity module, you need lots and lots of vitamelange extract. And you can't delivery cannon that. So I think I would like to get spaceships up and running first so that we can use the spaceships to bring the vitamelange extract over and then... Make then make these and then make these productivity module fours and then ship them around to, to be putting putting into all of these all these sort of machines. Mark also notes that he's cleaned up a copper mine that's north of the iron smelting. I mean, sure, I, I, I believe you, but if you've cleaned it up, I'm not going to be able to find it. It's, that's copper smelting. This is iron smelting. Maybe, maybe there's a maybe there's a copper mine over here, but it, it's gone now, so we can, we can, we can't really find it. <laughs> um, and he set up a, uh, a system to shoot uh, steel over to Big Rid to make the bio scrubbers. That's, that's lovely. Um, we we. We do need a decent rate, of, a decent quantity of bio scrubbers, I suppose. And I think that brings you up to date on the stuff we've been doing. So I am, as as ever, going to touch on um, what research has been done in this in this episode, and it was actually literally nothing. Um, interestingly, one of the researches has finished since I started. Oh, actually, several researches have finished since I started, uh, while I've been making the video. But we've been working very very hard on uh, mining productivity six, which means that when it, when you whenever your, one of your mines works, you get slightly more out for the amount of effort you've done. So. Um, it, it, it gives you it gives you a boost to your uh, productivity. Let's see uh, in here bonuses. Yes, yeah, so we've got now got a mining productivity of plus sixty percent. So each time a, a mine runs, it'll produce so it'll, it'll use up one, for example, copper out of this patch, but it'll produce one point six copper. Uh, copper ore. So it, again, it's another boost to the resources. If you get this high enough, then a resource patch will last for absolutely ages, and it'll mine really, really quickly. Uh, because the mining drill runs at still at the same speed it did before, but it produces 1.6 each time it runs. So if you get your mining productivity up to, say, much, much higher levels than this, then you could have a single drill producing producing at the speed that many many drills would before but the most important part of this is it also affects the uh, the core mining drills so each of our core mining drills is now also going to be running at a plus 60 percent productivity and that means these are producing 60 percent more stuff than they would have been before you can see it over there on the right um, <clears throat> And so that means that we're producing, again, getting more and more and more resources just for absolutely for free. And so that's going to be a really, really useful one to have. I'm, 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 glad, that, I'm, glad, that's, I'm glad we're working on that. The problem is that a lot of these are gated behind quite difficult sciences. I think that was a biological, a biological one. Uh, there's been a couple more researches that have happened during this video, but those don't count because they didn't happen during the stream. It has been remarkably quiet on the death front as well. Nobody died, and that's because we're all playing around either up in space or on peaceful planets where it's very, very safe, so we don't need to worry about getting killed. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, that's been very, very peaceful. No, no deaths at all to report there, I'm afraid, but um, I'm, sure we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll manage to get some, some more in, in a future video. Uh, so, that brings me to the end of everything I'm going to talk about today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and it's been... Uh, Interesting, educational, and all that sort of all that sort of shenaniganery. Uh, so it is today, it's Saturday. So that means on Monday we should be carrying on with another uh, Factorio stream. We'll be carrying on with all of this and solving some of the problems I've been talking about, like why all of our uh, stations have so many uh, have so many warehouses in them, like this one for example. That should just have a single warehouse. That's going to be a hard one to fix. But um, I did actually I did make a start on. Uh, so I don't I don't even know where it was because I uh, Tr Tristan was was fixing something and I went over and looked at it and went this station these stations are horrible I'm going to sort them out while I'm while I'm here um, but I can't even remember where it was I think it was this one yeah so along here as you can see <clears throat> I've picked up the. I've sorted out. The, these all had 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 the four warehouses, possibly even feed, feeding into. Yeah, all feeding into a fifth warehouse in the middle. So I emptied the four warehouses into the central one by taking out its. Uh, by taking out the uh, the, the, the the limiter on here. Uh, perhaps I should put it back again to one train's worth. I don't know. We'll, we'll worry about that another time. Um, but now there is only one warehouse here instead instead of five, and that should help a little bit with our UPS problems. Um, and yes. Yeah, so and then on Tuesday, Tuesday there'll be a, another video coming out. It, it, it'll be showing the uh, the next stage of. Uh, Mark's adventures with Pyanodons, where he's gone off and played with some uh, some some little critters and things like that. 
Wednesday will be in the next uh, will be the uh, second episode of the XCOM stream. It's not it's still not too late to submit a soldier though if you'd like to um, if you'd like to go uh, add your name to the rosters of the of um, Earth's Mightiest Heroes and and go out to defend the planet against the alien menace. Then follow the instructions in the linked video and um, and, and send send a soldier over and I'll add them to the to the list. And then on Friday and Saturday we'll have more of these Factorio catch up videos as you're used to. Uh, so as always, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel because it really does help uh, pull more people in to watch the videos. Uh, thank you for. Uh, Server, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on Monday for the stream. Bye bye.